So this is where we're at right now. Uh, I finished the surround on the bottom, over here, across the bottom, then down and around the ups other side. Got a little quicker on that side because I already had the patterns that I made on this side to finish that out. I'm not going around and finish welding anything yet because I got a little ahead of myself over there and just want to make sure that everything's going to work out here as far as how the body lines and everything come together. What I'm doing right now is I'm trying to establish this uh, lower support for where the bottom of the bumper will roll under. And what I had to do is create a bar, which I still haven't tied in to the, um, to the car. It just goes below and it'll get tied back to these, um, this, uh, the uh, end of the frame rail here. Somehow I'll, I'll tie that in. But this might have to be cut somewhere along to follow this. But initially I'm just establishing this roll over here. And I'm basing it off of, again, the, the rendering. The rendering showed this bottom of this bumper following through right at about the top of the hub here. So, again, it's all kind of just by eye, and I'm hoping it's going to work out, and the proportions will work out when I'm done. But just kind of standing back and taking a look at it and seeing what's going on. And uh, what I did to try and line it up, because this bumper come off as a unit so I had to make sure that this being the back side of the bumper lined up to the face of this so this will be the back side of the bumper here will come straight up here so the whole bumper will you know hopefully unhook and come off the top if you have to disassemble it and service it or do anything to it which I'll have to do that to paint it or finish welding it and so forth so Anyway, I wanted to keep going, uh, showing you some of the methods that I'm using in order to get this thing 100% level. I dropped a plumb bob down the back side of this area here through the bottom. And you can see that it's touching the front of the bar so that I know that that's, that surface is the same. It is something similar on either side. It's not exactly in the right position left or right because I kicked it the other day. But um, I'll get it squared up again, and then uh, slowly but surely we'll we'll get uh, we'll get that established and uh, go on from there. So the devil's in the details, as they say, and um, I have to uh, before I could continue to try and finish out this lower portion of the the bumper surround and the, the headlight surround. I'd add this bar to the bottom which is one inch by one inch and it um, is tied back to the frame rail ends the bracket that I made earlier to support the um, the headlights uh, uh, sub support structure and um, so that's um, underneath there and what it'll do is, is it'll receive the it'll, it's basically a place to bolt the, uh, the lower section of the front bumper to before I could get to putting those pieces on, I had to create a double bracket system here. These are two flanges that will be a place for me to weld the roll pan, which the roll pan will come down here, somewhere in here, probably not 100% covering the radiator, but uh, I might have some sort of an air dam to hide the rest of it. but. And I, we'll see what that looks like. This is a little bit of a short short shot down here, and I think it needs to be a little bit more tapered here. And then this flange here will go up to here, and this is where it'll uh, uh, connect to the lower uh, headlight surround. So this will give me a, a place to weld to. And I'll drill through and rosette to this flange. And these flanges, the first one you know, on the inside here, bolts through the face. Right here, you can see this bolt goes through to the back side. There's a, a captured nut over here. Now, there's a clearance hole that goes around this bolt for the front flange, and then this flange has a captured nut 
on its side so it can be bolted from the rear side and the way that works is you'll hook the, the bumper structure up top and then it swings down slaps against this bar and you'll be able to reach in and then bolt it up from the inside of this uh, lower roll pan splash pan whatever you want to call it the splash pan will already be on obviously it'll be the first thing it'll be part of the the rest of the body so the last thing to go on will be this uh, bumper so you have to kind of do everything in reverse when you're building it you know to make sure that when you assemble or disassemble it you'll be uh, uh, you'll have the proper sequence you won't have to, any any hidden bolts or bolts you can't get to but uh, that's what's going on with this so far So I'm developing the uh, pattern for the lower uh, valence and the lower portions of the bumper. It's kind of a chicken and an egg scenario. i got to put certain things on before I can see what the other things look like. So every chance I get, I try to do a little visualization, which involves this. Uh, right now, I've put this bar across the bottom, temporary aluminum bar. And I looked at the rendering, <clears throat> it looks like the bottom of this is pretty much low, level with the lower portion of the, of the rotor on the wheel. So, got kind of eyeballed that, got that level across, and then set these two points, and then set this straight across. As you can see, it's focusing on my finger here. As you can see, it's exposing the lower portion of the radiator, so I'll have to do some sort of a, a lower air dam treatment to protect that. Um, because this looked, I had this at the bottom of the radiator and it looked way too fat. Uh, so I used this uh, yellow pattern paper here to attach down to that bar and give it a little bit of a gentle slope. Um, the reason I really have to establish this is uh, this I can kind of see what it is uh, and where it needs to go. Um, and that's where I established this upper bar, which is the permanent bar. But this is this portion is smaller. It's smaller, and it also it relates to the pan and the roll of the pan and how the pan comes up and and uh, intersects with the lower portion of the bumper. So uh, that being the case, I couldn't just make sections this big and go all the way across with it and call it a day. This one actually has to it has to be smaller. I got to keep this thing from focusing on my finger here. So this area right here has to be smaller in height then this area here will be a little transition from this point to this point and then it'll go straight across and there's also a grill opening down here that'll have to be determined and there's two pockets for road lights but that can come later obviously um, and now I'm just trying to deal with the proportions and see how this uh, the general look uh, is if it's coming coming around or if it's looking too fat too wide too tall whatever but uh, um, like I said, it's chicken and an egg. I have to do things before I can do other things. Then, but those things have to be kind of, uh, it's, uh, it's a back and forth process, so to speak. So before I can go any further with this valence and develop this, I have to kind of see what this, this outer corner is going to look like and how it's going to interplay with the fender. Um, so uh, it's got to be rounded in, in, in this direction both at the headlight then again at the bumper and then again at the bottom um, at this, the bottom splash guard or roll pan so <clears throat> as uh, with what I was saying before everything has to come before everything else I mocked up the edge of the hood on the left hand side here and I'm going to open the hood and I'm going to start to build out the top of the fender and try to complete this corner of the bumper so that I can see how this is going to play out into the area of the fender and so forth so that's where that's at right now <laughs> 